Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 3 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I've got plans for all the things. So there's a couple things I want to do today. Uh, first off, I want to upgrade some of my Tetra tools that we made last episode, because I got some things to do there. I'd also like to make a Tetra-based weapon, probably some kind of sword. There's several types of swords that are available, and I'm not super sure on the difference between them all, so we might try them out and see what they're like. Um, but the plan is to make like a nice Tetra-based weapon. Uh, I did a little research on the Tetra mod. I found out that as of this version of Minecraft, like this exact version of Tetra that we're playing, uh, there's not a great 3x3 mining tool that's available, but the next version will have one. So I will probably start with the tools that I have. We'll see how quickly that version comes out, and maybe we'll circle back to Tetra uh, to check out the mining tools that are available um, as, they, as they advance. And I'll probably be checking out some other mining capabilities as well as I uh, play through the series here. So first off, I want to talk about the uh, diamond pickaxe that I've been mining with. As you can see, a bunch of things happened. Uh, honing is available. So I did level up my diamond pickaxe from mining. So I did a bunch of mining between episodes, you know, did, did this, that, and the other thing. Um, and as a result, once I leveled up the tool, like I hit that number that I was looking for for honing, it just came up with honing available. I don't know if it's continuing to get experience beyond the honing that's available. Like, I don't know if like, it's just hiding the, the level up system number. And we'll see once I apply a honing. So I, I dropped it in here to see what that's all about. Because I have no idea. Um, and when I click on diamond pick left, we can see there's mining efficiency, durability, and speed honings that are available. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between mining efficiency and speed would be. Like durability is obvious, right? And if I click on this, we get the same thing. If I click on the bone handle, we can do wrap two or speed. So I'm guessing wrap two means I can put a second wrap on it, but I'm honestly not sure. Um, so I wanna, I wanna click on this. I wanna do this on camera because I'm not super sure how this works, but I wanna do this on camera um, to, to, to make sure you guys see what's up. So let's try this. Let's hone speed. If I click on that, all right, um, so it's hone the module to increase the overall swing speed by 0 0.03. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Um, affects how fast as I may be swung, right? Uh, harvest efficiency. So I want to go back then and see what mining efficiency does to increase mining efficiency, which would be this one. Oh, is that the tier? Efficiency. What's efficiency do? What's the efficiency attribute on, on the mining? Let's see. I bet the hollow sphere will tell me. If we jump into double-headed pickaxe head. Is efficiency an attribute on here? I don't super see it. Efficiency. Not super sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what efficiency does. I'm 100% not sure what that does because because this has like a tier of zero. So I think the tier is like, can it mine iron? Can it mine redstone? Can it mine obsidian, right? Because because like if we look at the uh, iron pick, it has a tier two and the diamond pick has a tier three. So I think that makes sense. But what the efficiency does is I'm not super sure. We'll have to figure it out. We'll play with it a little bit. But I think, so let's try adding a honing to it. So I'm going to do speed one. Let's speed it up, right? And that sounds like a good time. Right, so if I can, I just hit craft. Requires a tier two hammer. We have a tier three available in our inventory. Boop. Well, that was cool. All right. Neat. Oh, that's cool. All right, so that was awesome. Okay. So now if I hold shift on this, um, we can see, oh, it shows hone speed one on that left diamond pick attribute. Um, that thing also became arrested, whatever that means. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and uh, the bone handle has settled. Uh, let's see. Um, he's already wrapped, right? Uh, yeah. So he has settled. The material density slightly increases the attack speed. Do, 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 do. There was like definitely a thing here. Details. Fully settled. There we go. Uh, it's providing additional integrity. Cool. Cool. All right. Neat burrito. I like that. Um, that's neat. So let's see, we've got all that string wrap one settled and now the hone is at four out of, or zero out of 490. So I, it looks to me like you want to level it up as soon as you can so that you can continue to get 
more stuff. So now what I'd like to do, um, can I can I just drop this in here? Will you let me material? Yeah, cool. Oh, nice. So I can replace the sword stuff here now with with things, right? Like I can just straight up do this. So stone blade is what we've got here. Man, look at all these different things. Uh, carver hook, serrate, temper. Serrates the blade providing a sawtooth edge has a 30% chance to cause the target to bleed for four damage over two seconds. Not effective against undead. Oh, that's cool. Temper the point of the blade. Hey, excuse, I'm working on my weapon here and you're gonna attack me? How rude. I mean, in fairness, I did let it get to be nighttime. I was having so much fun, and I was so excited about playing with Tetra. Because it's one of those mods that's kind of been on my radar for a bit, but I've yet to really have a chance to give it a go. So, excited about that. And uh, it was suddenly nighttime. Just making sure that these creepers that are appearing on the minimap aren't actually going to walk up and blow up my base. I can't tell if they're underground or not, but it looks like they are. Oh, no, no, that one's not. Hello, Mr. Husk. Ah! Rip. Killing me, Smalls. Alright. Not a big deal, though. That's why we are working on all the stuff and things. Can I not repair you right now? I need a stick to repair him? Well, that's interesting. So, oh, that's cool. Alright. I guess because it had such low durability problems, right? So, reinforce fuller. So I can put, like, iron on there, and that would add durability. But lower speed. Wood would add durability and slightly lower speed. Okay, that's kind of cool. Osmium, more durability, lower speed. Diamond's not an option. I don't know what other options there are for fuller, but that's kind of cool. Makeshift stone guard, remove module, binding, four finger ring, socket, wide guard. So I guess the the wide guard material here will affect what? Uh, that will affect armor. So I guess that's when you're blocking with the tool. It also affects durability, but it negatively impacts speed as well there. All right, that's cool. Kind of like that. Binding material, I can put string on it. That lowers speed, but increases durability. I really like how it kind of outlines what items you can do here. Four finger ring material. Well, that increases sp It also adds quick, whatever that is. So this is going to be that, 37, 67 durability. So about the same. 10% quick. I'm going to I'm gonna throw a little bit of osmium in there. Requires a tier 4 hammer. Oh. Oh. Okay. We might have to, we'll have to come back to that one. Four finger ring. Socket. I can socket gems in there. So adding a diamond, for example, will slightly increase speed, greatly increase durability, even a little bit of damage bump. That's cool. I should look at at emeralds too just so i know like what options there are i want to i want to have like a bunch of items on me just to see what impact they may or may not have uh on this stuff so i'm just going to make sure like i don't even know what all items i can put in here but like let's just grab a few things and see what happens right i want to have an understanding of what this does right so that sounds cool so socket right Ooh, look lapis would add that's, I think, going to add, like, a little experience thing going on. This adds crit chance, it looks like. So that's cool. And this just adds straight up extra damage. Neat. So let's make our stone blade a little bit better. So is this a basic blade? Is that what it is? Um, cool. I'm not sure what the difference between basic and heavy is. Large and hefty blade. I imagine that that, right, would be... So this has sweeping, has lower speed, higher damage, heavy osmium blade. Cool. And basic blade, not as much sweeping, more durability, more straight up damage, right? So damage plus three, whereas heavy blade would be also damage plus three, so about the same. But I imagine its, it's speed looks the same too. So I don't know, like, where's the downside to this? You know what I mean? Not sure what the downside to be. Now, machete, what would that be? So that looks a little bit slower. And then there's a short blade, which is going to be a little bit faster. 
It has jab, but no sweeping. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I get the impression that, like, heavy blade has higher sweeping. Basic blade doesn't have as much sweeping going on. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out what the downside of the heavy blade is. Because heavy blade just looks better in every way, right? Um, it looks that way. Should we try it out? I mean, it can't hurt, right? Oh, that requires a tier four hammer. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's the downside is we have to get a tier four hammer before we can try it out. But I should hopefully be able to do, oh, that also requires a tier four hammer. Maybe it's just the osmium that requires tier four. That might be the case. I think I can get a tier four though. I think it's, is a it tier four? The Blackstone hammer provides tier four capabilities. So what's Blackstone? Is that like vanilla, yeah, nethery Blackstone? Yeah, I think that's what it is. So we're gonna have to pop into the nether if we wanna to get to tier four. Good to know, good to know. Um, now if I threw iron on there, we would do a little, or I could throw diamond, that's gonna give me a lot more durability and definitely more damage. I like osmium because osmium gives me a little bit more damage than diamond does, but it definitely requires you know a higher tier to craft. Okay, not a big deal. So let's go with iron just for now because I'd like this to be a tetra tool because then it can level up and as it levels up right that would that'll be neat now my curiosity is i just applied set i just applied honing speed to my diamond pick if i replace that diamond component do i lose that hone i'm not sure i'm not sure but that's why it's fun to play with this mod we learn new things all right so let's just make this an iron sword i think that should be fine right so an iron sword from tetra now that looks cool um, I will add, I'll tell you what, I'm going to add a socket diamond. Can I do that? That requires two experience, but yes, I can do that. Cool. And that'll just bump the damage up a little bit. And I think that that probably is a cool idea. Um, right. Uh, binding. Is there anything I want to put in there? I could put string in, but that looks like an overall bad idea. <laughs> Everything's bad about that. It does bump up the integrity a lot, though, but it reduces a lot of things that I don't want to reduce. So I might hold off on that. What about leather? Same deal. So I probably don't want to do binding right now. Um, let's look at four finger ring material. That also has some negatives, but it adds to quick. Okay. Guard material, bone would add some armor. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure this thing's like as damaging as possible. There's benefits, to, obviously, to, to doing it this way, but so pommel. Let's see, counterweight module. Ooh, that adds a little bit of speed, which is cool. I'm guessing you require. Yeah, actually, you need more integrity if you want that. So let's look at our. What's a good way to add integrity? Grip loop, maybe. I don't know. That adds integrity. Oh, uh, now that needs more integrity is what that's saying. Four out of three. Fuller? That adds integrity. It reduces speed a little bit if we do osmium. I'm guessing you also need... So osmium is going to need tier four no matter what. Um, bone? That reduces speed a little bit and gives us... Yeah, that's not bad. So this is speed minus 0.5. This is speed minus 0.3. So bone's a better... Uh, fuller to use there, right? Kind of like that. And that gives me a lot more integrity, which I can then use to basically get myself better. Yeah, let's go with that for now. I can always replace it, right? So why not? I think that sounds cool. Um, yeah. And then for counterweight here, we can add you know, whatever we want. 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Yeah, bone looks pretty good for a counterweight. Yeah, if we're looking at speed for the most part, I feel like bone's kind of your best one. I like that. Grip loop? What's this do? So this adds durability and reach, but lowers speed. So grip loop increases reach and lowers speed. I don't think I need more reach, do I? I don't think so. Uh, neat. I really, there's a lot, there's a lot of options here, right? There's a lot of options here. 
I really feel like that's pretty cool. Yeah, binding would give you more integrity, even more integrity. We can get it up to eight, but it lowers a lot of attributes. So there's a lot of like, you know, pros and cons to the different things that you're gonna do. How about the hilt? Simple hilt, what hell material can we get? Get a little bit more durability, but a little lower speed. If I'm gonna do it, I want it to, I'm not worried about durability because I can repair it, right? Um, but what about wrapping the hilt? That increases durability and damage. 0.33, that's a little lower speed, but that's just straight up better damage for the cost of integrity. I would say that that's a win, right? Sweet. I like it. Look at our cool sword we've got. All right. That is cool. I like it. I like it. All right, let's clean up our inventory. Uh, we've got a nice sword now. We've got uh, a nice bunch of tools, actually. You can see, uh, I think I did this between episodes, right? I didn't do this on camera. I, I organized my chests a little bit. So now we've got a little bit more organization. Uh, so I've got, you know, this is what I standard do. This is my standard approach to, to things is I generally have blocks and building materials, plants, um, important items like like, you know, gems and and ores usually i'll eventually split this into two so i'll have a metals chest and a gems chest separate from each other uh and then i've got mob drops and then i've got just kind of like miscellaneous whatever stuffs right um so that looks cool so what i want to do today is it already nighttime again wow a whole day has gone by i've been tinkering with my tetra thing it is literally time to sleep again that's insane uh but what i'd like to do today i kind of also wouldn't mind an axe We'll see. We'll see. Uh, what I really want to do is focus on, on ore doubling, if we can. So I think what I'd like to do for ore doubling is use uh, thermal. So my to-do list will be as follows. I'd like to get a pulverizer going. Uh, so that would be you. And I'd also like to get a redstone furnace. So I can do ore doubling and smelting using redstone flux power. And that'll get me like the basic foundations of some technical things, right? Get get myself a little bit of redstone, get myself a little bit of power going. Uh, in order to do that, we're gonna need dynamos though. Um, so that's definitely a thing. Um, now my problem with that is I don't think thermal yet has any item or, 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 or energy transport stuff. So I don't think there's flux ducts at all. Um, so yeah, so I can get a, dy a dynamo for the purposes of creating and transferring power, but I don't think that there's a good energy transfer pipe system. However, we do have uh, refined pipes, which adds item pipes, fluid pipes, and energy pipes. So a basic energy pipe from refined pipes could do 1,000 forge energy per tick, 4,000 at tier two, 8,000 at tier three, 16 and 32,000 are of a tick. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm, I might want a basic one of these dudes. It's, it's, it's a bit of iron and redstone and glass, but it's not a terrible recipe. Um, and and the, the sterling dynamo will need this obviously, but we're also gonna need uh, water, right? Because the sterling dynamos require water. So this will be a good setup to check out. Um, and it might also be a good time to play with the item pipes just to see how they look, because I bet they're pretty cool. Refined pipes, huh? That sounds neat. And we could also use the fluid pipes if we wanted to transfer water. I'll probably need an aqueous accumulator, I would think. Is that not a thing yet? Is there not an aqueous accumulator yet? There might not be. There might not be. I'm not seeing it. Uh, okay, cool. How do I, how do I get water? There's the sink. Provides, that might be a thing. That might be a thing. Um, that could be cool. Are there pumps? There's there's ranged pumps. I think generally that's a config option if you want them to pick up water or not. Um, electric pumps, that's a that's another option from mechanism. So we'll have to look at how to do, how to do water. Um, so the steam dynamo is definitely the, the route we're gonna go. Yeah, I think so. The sterling. There's also the compression, right? So sterling, is sterling actually, is it just, is it just coal? It might be just coal. I'll have to check. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, compression dynamo uses like oil and stuff. Magmatic is, is lava. Numismatic is the coins and 
Lapidary uses gems. So I'm thinking Sterling may or may not need water. We're gonna have to check it out. But that's the plan for today. So let's let's get started. Um, so we're gonna need to process at least some of our iron. So I'm gonna start smelting up, you know, a good bit of it uh, just to have it ready. But we're gonna need lots of iron. We're gonna need lots of redstone. We're also gonna need, uh, I should get a shovel of some description. I'll probably just get like a regular old vanilla shovel. Uh, I, I could go the Tetra route of shovel. Well, let's do that. Let's do the Tetra route. We won't go too crazy making it fancy, but I'll just like make it a Tetra shovel so that it can level up, right? So shovel head will become iron. And I don't have my thingy up there. That's the problem. I think there's a, there's a Tetra thing we can do. There's a block that we can hang our, our hammer on and it'll be usable. I think this, the rack. Items can be hung on the rack. Right click to add or remove an item. A tool hung on a rack near a workstation becomes available for crafting as if it was in the player inventory. The rack needs to be within a three by three area. So let's make one of those because that sounds cool, All right? So we make a rack and then we need you. And then I can put the hammer on the rack. Aha, uh -huh, that's neat. That's neat. I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna put them right there. I think would not be a bad idea. Yeah, I like that. All right, cool. So now I don't need to have the the hammer in my inventory. I can just replace the shovel head with you, and more durability, more damage, more um, digging. Not as not as you know, but okay, cool. Right. Uh, and and just for for. Giggles. Is there anything on me that I can do in the binding? I'm not going to go crazy in this, right? Um, but I'm just curious. Yeah, that would lower speed. I could probably do bone. I wasn't going to go crazy on this. I wasn't. I wasn't, I said. But then I just said to myself, it's too fun. So I could wrap you with string, and that will increase the speed a little bit. And then I could replace your basic handle with bone. Actually, that wasn't a good idea. That wasn't as fast. What about light handle? What's that do? That'll increase speed and throwable. Can be thrown by holding right click. Deals 99% damage if it hits an entity. Hitting a block will break the block if the item's harvest level is high enough and the item's harvest speed is greater than the block's heart. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And what's long handle do? That adds reach, can hit blocks from further away. I mean, I kind of like, I kind of like light, and that increases the speed. That sounds neat. Light handle, not too shabby. Yeah, we gotta try that out. I mean, that just sounds cool, right? You can throw the tool, and it'll break, and it'll break the thing. Let's go try it out. So I hold right click. <laughs> That's cool. Man, that is super cool. Was not expecting that. That's a neat. That's neat. I like it. All right. So we need some sand, obviously, because we're going to need glass to make our pipes. Not a bad mining tool at all. All right, guys. So let's start off with a basic sterling dynamo just to see what's involved here. So I know I just made some of these. I'm going to need some other some gold as well, I think think so uh i might as well smelt up what little gold i have uh bummer but we'll get to ore doubling in a bit right so that'll be you uh and then you're gonna need a little bit of gold so let's you know what i'm gonna hold off on smelting too much i'm gonna try and ore double it as much as i can right uh, i think that's not a terrible idea so you just need i presume andersite or diorite or probably smooth stone would work there but i mean if you'll take diorite without me having to smelt it sure why not all right, cool. So do you need water or no? Eh, I guess not. I guess he doesn't need water yet. That's cool. Probably because uh, there's no aqueous accumulator yet. So let's do a little testing because haven't really played with thermal in 116 yet. So curious how things work out. Wow, look at you. So he's going to throttle his speed, I guess, once he fills up just like it did before. That's cool. Now how about break and replace? Do you retain your RF or do you lose it? He retains his RF that is stored in the buffer, but does not retain the coal that hasn't been smelted yet. So, important thing to know. Cool. 
All right, not too shabby. Now for the redstone furnace, this thing should be pretty straightforward. Um, actually, you need tin, don't you? So is that what is that right? Is that what we need? Uh, a tin gear. So we're gonna need to grab a little bit of tin here. I'm sure we've got some, right? Yeah, we've ran into that before. Let's do eight-ish. Sounds like a good, goodish number, right? That'll be enough for two machines: the furnace and the pulverizer. Yeah, that looks good to me. Also, getting the glass going so we can check out our basic energy pipe. I'm not sure. Uh, if the basic energy pipe needs an extraction dude or not, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it'll just straight up work. I'm suspecting it shouldn't need that, but let's check them out because they look cool. Oh yeah, that looks nice. That looks very nice. Not bad at all. And if we can have some semblance of automated smelting and processing today, I'd be very happy about that. Uh, but let's start with the pulverizer and we'll go from there. Okay, so step one, redstone pulverizer. So you're gonna need a tin gear, right? Uh, you're gonna need the machine frame, and then we're gonna need a redstone flux dude. So that means another piece of gold, obviously. Uh, that should be enough glass for now. Uh, I'm gonna need, yeah, just one more piece of gold. Should be good. And then copper gear. So we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need eight copper after your gold is done. Yes because the pulverizer is going to need two copper gears, so a total of eight. And then we're also going to need a couple pieces of flint uh, and a piston. So we might have flint? Have we not really run into gravel yet? We may have not really run into gravel yet. Is the is the flint recipe in here? Oh, it is. Nice. I don't know if that's a vanilla recipe or something added by a mod. Doesn't matter. Either way, love that recipe that it exists. Cool. You can go back to smelting sand then. And I'm going to grab a little bit of coal here and be ready to make myself a bunch more mini coal, which I do love. Love the mini coal. For those of you who may not be aware, mini coal always smelts exactly one item. So like regular coal smelts eight items, but you'll waste it. Uh, so if you only have to smelt one item, it'll waste the other seven items worth of smelting that the coal can do. So mini coal, you basically get eight per coal piece. And uh, it's like the best thing in the world. Um, so let's do... We want the pulverizer first, so we're gonna definitely do that. A couple more pieces of copper and we'll be good to go. All right, smelting complete. So now we're ready for our pulverizer. Bada bing, bada boom. So now we need a piston. We need our redstone flux coil and we're good to go. First machine of the series. Pretty excited about that. Uh, pro tip for those of you who may be new to modded Minecraft, if you have a list of items that you wanna craft, uh, you can add them to this left hand side by just mousing over and hitting a on your keyboard and uh, it'll add it to the like a to-do list and then you hit a over here to remove it so pretty straightforward so i still want the redstone furnace so i'm going to keep that over there and that looks pretty cool all right so let's uh let's see here so we've got i'm probably not going to need you guys as much in a minute but i still need them for a few moments at least but let's clear out back here Marble's a little bit slow to mine. At first I was like, man, this pick is slow, but I'm like, all oh, right, marble's a little bit slower than normal stuff anyway. So let's try that out. Ooh, that looks nice. Now can I, I know in, in refined pipes, there are extractor attachment, but that's I think mostly for items and fluids. I don't think that affects uh, energy, right? Energy is just gonna straight up extract, but look how nice that looks. That's like a nice little model there. I definitely like that. So then effectively, we're just going to put coal in there and he will output his stuff into here. Beautiful. And now if I want to pulverize this, we're good. Now, I believe also we can put flint in there or other things to kind of make this a little bit better. So I don't have a ton of flint at the moment, but I mean, it's not like flint is a critical resource that I'm going to need a lot of. So I can easily grab a few and that'll boost, I think, your output here. Uh, I think. So adding a flint as a, as a little bonus there is pretty cool. I think it just slightly increases the chance at like extra stuff. I'm not 100% sure. I thought, I thought it told us on the, on the thing here, it shows you what you can put in there, but it doesn't tell me what the catalyst changes do. That's fine though. Pulverizer catalysts, there we go. Um, so this will be a primary modifier 1.1X. So it gives you like a 10% chance I think of getting a little extra and like a 50% chance of getting the auxiliary. 
I think, if I'm reading this correctly. It also affects the energy, um, and the chance to use it is only 20%. This guy gives you a much better chance, lowers the energy use by a lot, um, so that's kind of cool. Basalt's powder comes from Basalt's shards, which come from uh, these dudes. All right, not too shabby. So we got some gold dust, we got a little extra gravel. So now we've ore doubled. Successful ore doubling complete. Let's uh, do some tin. And I think what we should be able to do here also uh, would be to make a couple chests. Let's make sure I'm correct about this. But I think if I put you here and here, and we configure your sides, auto input enabled, auto output enabled, I'm gonna make the top be input and the right be output. So what this is doing is it's gonna automatically pull items out of the chest that's sitting on top of the pulverizer and automatically output items to the chest that's on the right of the pulverizer. So if I were to throw, for example, my tin ore in here, uh, and see how it automatically pulled into the pulverizer, and then anything that gets made by the tin ore will automatically output to the chest on the right. Awesome. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I know some of you guys who are watching are probably like, yeah, Direwolf, we know this. But uh, as a reminder, I, I kind of treat my Let's Play series that I'm doing here as a tutorial for those who may have not experienced a lot of modded Minecraft. So there will definitely be some tutorializing of the, of the mods and how they work uh, so, that, so that people who are new to modded Minecraft can use this series to learn how to play with mods. So effectively what we've got here is a sterling dynamo generating power. It's capable of doing 40 RF a tick, but it self throttles itself to what it needs to produce. So that's why it's only producing 20 at the moment because this guy's only using 20. So we, we're producing more power than we need, which is a good thing. Uh, we're using mini coal, which isn't gonna last very long, but it's also not gonna waste power too badly. Um, we could throw some augments in there, but we're probably not at the stage where we're ready to augment things too much. Uh, and then we have the basic energy pipe here transferring power into the pulverizer. Next step for me then would be, uh, let's make sure that we get, uh, we'll see. Uh, are you the tin? Yes. So let's smelt up some of this tin if we can, um, right here. I may not need to do that, let's see. Do I have enough stuff to make this not required? We'll find out. So I want my redstone furnace next, right? Let's get that. We're gonna need some copper for the redstone furnace for sure. So let's make sure copper is kind of prioritized here. I'm gonna replace what's in there. That looks cool. And you can smelt because it's there's no real benefit to using the redstone furnace. I might wind up using a little less coal, but I don't think it really matters to be honest with you. And let's get the copper cooking as well. That looks good. Cool. And I'm gonna do things a little differently, I think, uh, in this series. So let's do this. Uh, you're cooking that up. We're ready to make our first bit of you. I'm gonna need at least a little bit more of this. So we need four more of you, and I'm gonna need these iron nuggets still. Let's get, the other thing we're gonna need is clay. I might have to go find that out in the world because I don't think I've found any clay yet. So clay can generally be found in rivers. So let's head for this river over here. Uh, that would be this direction-ish. Oh, my map doesn't show me what direction I'm facing. That is game-breakingly not good. But hopefully there's a little bit of clay in the river over here. Man, I'm still just enamored with how cool my spawn is. How great is this spawn? Am I right, though? Hey, look, some salt. That's cool. From Mechanism. That'll come in handy. A little aquamarine shale from Astral. Good to know that that's still how you get that. Astral changed a lot. I think he rewrote the mod from scratch, if I'm not mistaken. But, I, like, I think a lot of it's similar, but there's definitely been some, some big changes, too. Cool. Okay, a little bit to craft in later. Looks like we have about our bricks ready. Sweet. Okay, another copper gear, please, and we're ready to go. Nice. All right, so how do we want to handle this? Um, there's two ways we could really we could really do this, and I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want it to work. Um, we could, I think, I think my best bet here. Let's let's remove you. Let's just get rid of you for the time being. 
And I could make the hammer if I wanted to, but meh. But meh. Let's put you here. Let's run this. Do I want two of these or one? I haven't quite figured that out. Now, are you gonna... What do you do with your internal flame? Does it does it waste the coal or not? If it doesn't, then I'm cool. I'm cool with not using tiny coal here. Right? So if these flames stop, that means that it's not wasting the coal at all, and that's kind of good. I like that. I like that a lot, actually, because it looks like that's what's happening. Um, so we've got our pulverizer. We've got our... Uh, redstone furnace. The problem is, is the pulverizer has a chance to make things like gravel. So we don't want to do like we've done in the past, where we have the the pulverizer emit directly into the furnace, because eventually the gravel will fill up in the pulverizer and not go anywhere. So we either want a buffer chest between the pulverizer and the furnace, or what we could do is use a double chest sitting on top, and that might be cool. Um, I like the idea of a double chest, right? And then maybe we could even have like a third chest for for outputs, right? And that might be cool. I like that idea. So we'll put the pulverizer here. We'll put the furnace here. We'll put you here. I don't want to shift click because I want it to be a double chest. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure you. I'm going to shift click this to remove the output to the right. And I'm going to turn this into blue and orange, so it'll both pull and push. But it should only pull things that it can that it can smelt. So if I put all this stuff up here, including the gravel, it ain't going to pull any of that in. But the iron, it will. I think. Pretty sure. We may have to turn on. Yeah, all input still enabled. Uh, he's pull appetite. Okay. I guess. So what can appetite do? That can be used to make phyto grow, which is cool or cyan dye, or appetite dust. And what does appetite dust make? Also phyto grow. So we would get two appetite equals a phyto grow, or we would get two appetite equals a phyto. I, I guess it doesn't matter. I don't see the difference. It's, all, it's or dictionary with each other, or just both works. That's fine though, that's fine. It's. A little bit of a waste of energy to do this because it's 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 pulverizing things we don't really need to pulverize but i'm okay with that um because it makes the automation work a little bit better and then you sir will be input enabled output enabled you're going to output to the right and you will input from the top and what he should do now is pull in any dusts that need to be smelted oh but then the problem is he might pull in the iron ore so actually thinking about that i don't want this Right? I don't want this. What I'm going to do is shift this out a little bit. So we're going to do you. We're going to do a chest here, right? Because we don't want him to pull the unpulverized iron ore into himself. And that's possible when we have that set up. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to import. Oh, you also pulverize gravel. Today I learned into sand. Cool. All right. Well, that's fine too. I mean, sand is more useful than gravel, right? Um, so let's do this. And this will also prevent the problem that we were just discussing, right? So all this will go in here, right? You will output to the right. We'll put the iron ore in here. And then you will input from the left. Let's make it output to the top. Cool. And then our, our ingots will go into there. So what's going to happen is he'll pull the iron into the top of the pulverizer, process it, right? And then output whatever he gets into here. This guy will then dump whatever he makes into here. And he probably won't be making sand and flint anymore, but that's okay. How's that look? That's a relatively well automated bit of ore processing, I think. Not too shabby. So input chest, output chest, and miscellaneous stuff that doesn't get processed, like appetite and gravel, will land in here. And that'll work. I think that'll work pretty well, actually. All right, so I'm going to call that wrapping up point for the episode. So for now, Dial20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. And uh, now that I've got ore doubling up and going, it means that I can be less hesitant about using my resources. Because I'm always like, I don't want to. I don't want to use iron. I'm going to be you know, wasting it because I have Nord double yet. Well, now that I am more doubling it, we're cool. So I'm going to go mining between episodes. I will probably get another hone upgrade um, and, and I'll just apply it somewhere. 
And then, uh, yeah, that sounds like a plan. All right, so mining off camera. I also have to sleep through the night. And I'm also going to go harvest all those crops outside because I have a lot of crops to harvest. And that sounds like a good time. All right, Dell 20 signed off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.